We welcome to the show Roddy Byers. How's it going, Roddy? Pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Yeah, it's an interesting mix. I think it, I think it really works. Rockabilly, ska, punk, all infused together. It's different. That's what I've always played, really. I, I, I didn't really play ska or reggae in the specials. I, 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 I played... I, <laughs> I just played what, what I knew, really, because when the Jerry Dam was the, the band's leader, asked me to, to join the band, I was in a rock and roll punk band, you know. So I, I just kind of fitted in the best I could, you know. Did a bit of Dwayne Eddy, a bit of Johnny Thunders, and a uh, bit of Clash kind of thing, you know, and rock and roll. Yeah, it definitely worked. And what were your memories back then? Well, <laughs> where do I start, you know? Uh, uh, well, it, it all started off brilliantly, you know, and uh, we, we kind of uh, taught ourselves to death uh, up until we did Ghost Town. And then uh, some of us got back together again in the, the mid-90s for four years, mostly in the States, touring, sometimes about six weeks at a time, you know. And then uh, in 2009, uh, most of the original band got back together again uh, until I uh, quit uh, in 2013. And you mentioned that you were toured to death. That happened a lot back then, didn't it? They, they kind of realised what mostly, like most bands had a very short shelf life, you know what I mean? So uh, they'd kind of like break you into one territory and once you broken England, they'd take you to Europe and they'd take you to the States and uh, just basically to see how you did, you know, and uh, it was, which still sounds great fun, which it was, you know, mostly, but, uh, you know, it's very tiring, even, even we were pretty young in them days, or early 20s, you know, but uh, every night's a Friday night, you know, and uh, being cooped up on tour buses, uh, together didn't uh, make us the best of friends either, you know. Even with uh, your best friends, it's difficult, but, uh, uh, but with the specials, we were never close mates to start with. Our leader, Jerry Damas, uh, picked us all from different local bands and uh, put us together, so uh, we didn't have that sort of uh, love relationship to start with, you know. So if you spend uh, six weeks... Well, we, I think we did uh, four weeks around Europe, a week off in the UK, and then uh, six weeks around the States. And uh, you imagine, like, sort of doing that and doing the kind of shows we were doing, sometimes two shows a night. So you'd literally be sort of, you'd come off stage and your tonic suit would be actually, like, steaming, you know, with, with like, because uh, you were so through to the skin, you know. We didn't get very fat in them days. We were all very slim. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And it isn't necessarily as glamorous as some people think, is it, touring? And... You do have some times where you get a bit of a break or, you know, and you can be in somewhere nice and uh, see places you only ever saw on TV before. But uh, mostly it's uh, whatever's in between the, the airport and the hotel and the venue, you know. Yeah. You don't really get a lot of time off, you know. So with, with the Scar Billy Rebels, how's that going? Because obviously everybody's been on lockdown, haven't they, recently? Yeah, well, we were doing great a while back, you know, because we had a, a real full diary for the past uh, three or four months. And then this lockdown thing happened and uh, that was it. You know, we've, got to, we've got to try and rearrange the shows for either later in the year or next year. But I've got to... A promoter in America wants me to go over to California in November. That's, that's if that's possible, you know. Who knows at the moment? And I've got to, I've signed a contract to do a tour in Australia in, in next year in January. You know, all over the place over there. So uh, it, it all depends on the whether people, you know, the flights, you know, the planes are flying and the, they let you in and. Well, it's, what's going to happen? It's all pretty much up in the air. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, so what have you been doing during lockdown? Have you been doing your music? Well, and... I've been trying to finish a few songs, you know, and doing a few bit of DIY around the house and uh, babysitting my grandchildren as well. <laughs> it's all pretty glamorous, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, it's that's good. It's nice to have a bit of a break. I've, I've been saying for 
for a few years. Uh, it'd be nice to have a bit of time off, but uh, I'm getting a bit stir crazy now. You know, I'd like to go and uh, get on stage again. Oh, I bet you would. I mean, as a musician, there can't be a better feeling, can there? Well, you know, it's 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 part of what I do. You know, and like to not be able to go on stage or to even rehearse with the band at the moment. You know. I, it's, uh, it's very strange. You know. And I was saying this to somebody the other day, I mean, who would have thought it five months ago before it happened that this would have happened? It's coming, that's for sure. You know. How it's going to turn out, I don't know, really. Just got to hope that they find a, a vaccine or, or to some way of like we can do shows. And, you know, it just because I tend to play. You know, if I do like some big gigs, well, look, my bread and butter works mostly small clubs, you know. So mm. uh, if they can't, uh, you can't, they, they won't, if they can't pat them out, you know, it's, that's my, my sort of, uh, not livelihood so much now, but uh, it's, it's what you do. What I do, you know. Yeah, and. Also, with uh, those smaller clubs, it's going to be well. Hopefully, a lot of them will get through it because obviously they haven't been getting well, the money in. That's the other problem. And whether a lot of these places are going to still be opening, uh, you know, I imagine a lot of them are going to close down. You know, the same with the, the pubs and stuff. It's like the old ghost town thing again, isn't it? You know, I know in, in Coventry, you know, a lot of the, the places we used to play have all gone now. You know, and. Uh, there's very few sort of. It's, it's either the very big show, big big venues, or the occasional pub gigs. There's not a lot in between anymore, you know. So with rockabilly, who are some of your favourite singers and groups from the past? Well, I kind of always loved. Uh, well, I was a punk rocker in, in the specials, you know. Like, but I always loved like the, the very early rock and roll, the originals, you know, like Chuck Berry, uh, Presley, Gene Vincent, you know, Buddy Holly. Eddie Cocker, I always, I always loved all that stuff, you know. I wouldn't say I was a huge fan of the, the rockabilly scene as it's carried on since, but the, the original stuff was what I really loved, you know. The original rock and roll, yeah, being a guitarist, yeah. I suppose it's a no-brainer, really. Yeah, well, they, they, they kind of did that, started it all off, really, you know. No, I loved all that sort of the 60s pop stuff as well, I kind of like grew up in the uh, country music in the sort of late 60s. So I kind of grew up on the Kinks and the Rolling Stones and Beatles and all that kind of stuff. So that, that was always a big influence, you know. So, so with the specials, when you were with the specials, what do you think the best song is that you recorded? Not mine, I suppose. <laughs> well, I wrote Rat Race, which got to number five, I think, in the charts in the UK. Um, I, I did uh, a couple of others uh, which uh, were not uh, released singles. Uh, Concrete Jungle, which is an LP track, which I sang on the original first album and credited for some reason. And uh, Hey Little Rich Girl, which Abby Winehouse covered, uh, God Bless Us Before She Died. So, like, you know, I did, I did a few. And how did that work back then with the specials? Like, I've heard that it was sort of it wasn't necessarily all together. You'd get together, or is that is that wrong? Like when you'd write a song. Well, or... it was the band leader, you know, who basically sort of put the benign dictator they said in different books. So um, you know, we all kind of contributed, but uh, Jerry, the, the keyboard player, was the leader and the, most of the stuff was, he wrote those down, so he, he, he tended to pick what he wanted to, us to do. So about next year, as you said, it's all a bit up in the air at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I'd like, sort of, uh, I'm looking, it'd be great to Australia again. I've, uh, I've been there, uh, well, I've done a few tours with the specials there, and I've done a few solo things, and uh, last time I was there, I'd, I'd uh, Band, the Fun Addicts, uh, Australian ska band, back me. Mental, something, something mental. They had a couple of, they had, they had a hit in England as well in the 80s. Uh, mental don't think that's it. And they, they backed me on a couple of gigs as well. So yeah, I'm not, not, I, I've been over to California on my own and uh, I've got my own sort of like band there, back me. 
for them about six times since uh, I left the what, what's uh, the, recent, the recent incarnation of the specials. So I'm still getting around. Did uh, Singapore recently, and uh, a couple of years ago I did Argentina. You know. So it's getting around a bit still. Yeah, it's, it's still very popular all around the world, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. We, we'd have never thought that if someone had told us in 1979 that people would be listening to a special sort of first album and two-tone scale like 40 years later. You know, it's, uh, it's beyond our dreams, really. Do you think maybe it's because it didn't go on for as long as it should have? Because how long was it, the two-tone period, roughly? Well, probably just over three years originally. But, uh, you know, I think the business tends to, in them days, it, it changed pretty quick anyway. You'd have punk rock one minute, then it'd be two tone, and then it'd be new romantics just after that, you know. I think it was in the, the business, you know, the music business interest to keep things changing, you know. They can get some other kids in to sort of uh, do what they're told and do their job, you know. Quite a long time ago now. What do you think it is about the music that people still love? Well, it's, it's kind of thinking, thinking man and woman's dance music, really. That was what's been said about Two Tone. It was kind of like, it was, we kind of took the original star from the 60s Jamaica and, and put like uh, today's, well, those days sort of problems into, into those songs and you know, mixed up a few things, you know. Musically, and uh, the, the original uh, Jamaican ska was political as well, you know. I mean, it's fantastic music, it will never die. Thanks a lot for joining us, Roddy, and we look forward to seeing you soon, hopefully. Right, cheers, uh, mate, thanks very much.